Hi, welcome to One Eye on the Page. It's another vlog week. I have completed four books this week. The first book that I completed was Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson, which is one of the uh, books that I picked for my Tolkien readathon. It's a book that I have never read before, although I do know quite a bit about of it just through literary osmosis pretty much obviously the character Lon John Silver very well known character I think that this book is one of those books that I wish that I had read when I was younger I think if I had read this when I was young somewhere between the like the ages of 8 to 14 that I possibly would have loved this book as it is now it it was it was pretty good it was fine there was nothing particularly overwhelming about the book nothing that just from my knowledge about pirates that have kind of seeped into my brain through the years that I I, I didn't expect. Uh, I they gotta admit that I like Jim Hawkins more than I expected to. He does do a few things that you would expect a stupid boy to do, <laughs> uh, and uh, I I say stupid because. He's a young boy, and young boys are occasionally stupid. I don't think the character himself is stupid. It's just, I was one stupid boy. So, so long ago. Um, I do think that the book suffers a little bit from, there's a lot of red shirts. Um, <laughs> there are people you know are there just to die and, and they don't really serve any other purpose they're they're pretty much npcs and uh it again it's too bad that i didn't get to read the book when i was younger because a lot of the stuff that i perhaps roll my eyes at now and say oh yeah i knew that was coming i probably would have loved then but this is just, just not the way that it works. Uh, I'm going to give this a somewhat generous 3.5 stars. I still did enjoy the book. I enjoyed uh, Long John Silver. I enjoyed Jim's small growth. I think that the book ended too quickly. I think there was more that we could have gone into. Um, it was like, we got off the island, okay, we're done. And uh, I expected more, I guess. But it, it was fine. It was good. It's a young man's book. I'm not a young man anymore. So, the second book that I read was a book that I have read before. It is Carry On Jeeves by P.G. Woodhouse. As you will know if you've listened to my vlogs before, if I've read a P.G. Woodhouse book, it means that I'm generally reading it for the podcast that I do with my daughter, Robin. Uh, I'll be Dash of Woodhouse Podcast. This is our next book that we're going to do. It is 10 short stories about Bertie Wooster and his valet, Jeeves. I love Bertie Wooster. I tolerate Jeeves. Um, but uh, reading Wooster stories is comfort reading to me. Uh, particularly after reading Smith in the City, the last P.G. Woodhouse novel that I read that wasn't as fun to read because the character Smith I didn't particularly like. I love Bertie. Bertie's probably my favorite character in Woodhouse. And uh, I I get very defensive for him, which is kind of hard because his friends suck and his valet 
isn't always looking out for him as he should. Robin will disagree with that, and you should watch our podcast to see us discuss this. Uh, the podcast for this one won't be out until uh, November 1st. Next podcast is 1st of October, and that's Smith in the City. As I said, I have already read it. I knew what to expect, but I always love I always love Woodhouse's language. I always love Birdie's language because Birdie, more than any other Woodhouse character, <laughs> he he almost has a Shakespearean vocabulary if Shakespeare was occasionally drunk and often lazy. And I don't say that Birdie's occasionally drunk, but I think if you got Shakespeare really drunk, that he and Birdie may be more on a level there. Uh, this is just a, a fun read. Pretty much any Worcester and Jeeves book is a fun read. You, you can also start Worcester and Jeeves book any book. You don't have to read them in any particular order. Birdie will guide you through what you need to know. This is a four and a half stars. Uh, the only reason I don't get this a five stars is, yeah, sometimes just the way people treat Birdie drives me a little batty. So, then I finished... Holly by Stephen King, which I will not get into greatly. I have made a separate video for Holly, but I'll talk about a little bit. Uh, Holly Gibney is a character that has appeared in King works before. Mr. Mercedes, Finders, Keepers, and End of Watch, the Bill Hodges trilogy. She was also a character in The Outsider. And in the main novella in If It Bleeds. So this is really Holly's fifth appearance. This is her first time being the main character in a novel. Your enjoyment of the novel, and I say this pretty much every time I talk about a book with Holly Gibney in it, it's going to depend on your love, tolerance of Holly Gibney. Uh, Holly Gibney is a polarizing character among uh, King fans. I like her. I don't love her. I don't hate her. Um, I gotta say, I lean more towards love after this novel. Uh, she is, at the beginning of the novel, it, it's set in COVID times. And there's talk about COVID and vaccines and Donald Trump, but not as much as you might be led to believe by people who write reviews on sites like within hours of the book being available. And no, they did not read the book that quickly. I'm sorry. But uh, there is talk about all those things, but nowhere near as much as you might think there would be. Uh, she is contacted by Penny Doll, whose daughter Bonnie uh, disappeared three weeks before, and she wants her to find her and, or somewhat unspoken, find out what happened to her. Holly's partner, Pete, is sick with COVID. Her friend Jerome, who occasionally does work with Finders Keeper, uh, is working on a book. His sister, Barbara, has something else going on her own. And Holly's mother has just died. Uh, Holly's grief and her many, many emotions to do with her mother's death and, well, just to her mother. If you've read uh, any book with Holly in it before, you know that she and her mother have a complicated relationship uh that's not the main focus of the book but it kind of permeates all throughout the book it's a very 
low key, just king ruminating on grief. It it's not the focus like in revival. I think grief is it's not the focus of the book, but it's what makes pretty much everything that book happens. Grief doesn't really make anything happen in this book, but it just it's it's in every page, but like in the periphery. I I don't think a lot of people really talk about that, but that's just something that stuck out to me. I like the book. I really like the book. If you want to know more about why I like the book, you can look up there. You can look up there, whichever one I'm pointing to that is correct. If you don't actively dislike Holly, I think you'll do yourself a good favor. Reading this book, don't worry about politics. If you can, I gave it a four and a half stars. The final book that I read was, let me think, because I read it on Kindle, so I'm going to try to remember the name. It is Mimi Lee Gets a Clue by Jennifer J. Chow. There are apparently multiple Mimi Lee mysteries. This, much like the Jane Delaney mysteries, is a series that I am not going to continue. Although I did enjoy this more than Undertaking Irene. Mimi Lee has started a grooming business. A dog grooming business. And she's trying to get clients. And her investor has certain high society rich ladies bring dogs there to get them groomed and eventually Mimi notices uh, a trend among a lot of the dogs that come to see her. Uh, they were all received from a, a dog breeder who uh, is not treating the dogs well. Mimi goes to see him. They get into an argument and later he ends up dead. And so she, uh, she feels that she must clear her name. Uh, she has <laughs> an overbearing Asian mother. She has a next door neighbor that is very attractive and who she acts like a love struck 12 year, year old around. It's like, I'm sorry. I don't think real adults act like this. And if they do act like this, they're certainly not running their own business if they can't control their emotions. Um, most of the characters in here are caricatures. They're, there's the police detective who has focused in on Mimi as the main and apparently only suspect and doesn't do anything else except concentrate on that. There's a school principal who's just a raging asshole, I guess, uh, for no particular reason. Uh, Mimi Lee doesn't have any detective skills. In fact, she's very bad. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. Her biggest help is a talking cat. <laughs> um, yeah, cat talks to her. And, um, and cat's got a bit of a tood. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> um, yeah. 
do I think a talking cat could work in in a, a mystery novel? Sure. I I just I don't think that this is the mystery novel. Um just the characters are all too ridiculous. But I have to say to the I wish a cat to talk for me. I do have to say that it is better than undertaking Irene. Um I, I'm going to give it a three out of five stars. Uh, honestly, but that's probably for the talking cat, which is ridiculous, but sure. Why not? I've been reading Unfinished Portrait by Exit Christie, uh, writing as Mary West McCott. I'm not, I'm reading it because I have to, because of the five year Exit Christie thing that I'm doing. Uh, having read Giant's Bread by Agatha Christie, there's a lot of similarities between it. Like the whole going back and telling the tale of the protagonist's youth. Why? In Giant's Bread, there was really no reason. And I'm not really seeing a reason here in Unfinished Portrait. She she loved her mother. That That's the main thing. I don't think you need to give us like play by play of her from ages three to four to six to eight. You can do that in a few paragraphs. But so yeah, I'm reading that. I'm still reading uh, some of the same books that I was reading last week. Uh, the Dog Stars by Peter Heller. Haven't really gotten too much further than that. Uh, Eleanor Oliphant is perfectly fine. Cannot remember the author's name. I uh, haven't really read much more in it this week. I have started reading Enchanters Endgame, which is book five, the uh, the Bulgariad by Debit Eddings. Uh, I have read the series before. Uh, one of my prompts for one of my prompts for the Tolkien Readathon was the last book of the series, so I decided to read this one, which I have not read in many, many years, and see how it holds up. I'm okay with the story. There are a lot of things in here that grate on my nerves that people do. David Endings has a lot of issues with dialogue attribution which I will get into more when I finish the book. Uh, I have started uh, a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. It started, just barely started. i um, listening to that on audiobook. It is read by Nick Offerman. I think that should be interesting, but I haven't listened enough to know. That is pretty much it. And... Uh, Please like and subscribe and I will talk to you next time.